Hello and welcome to Step by Step Acrylic Painting with me, Christine McShane. Today we're going to be painting this wonderful still life. Now it's pretty simple and it's impressionist inspired. The reason we're going to be doing this so early on in the game is because it's fun. And you know, if it's acrylic painting or any kind of painting isn't fun, then we kind of lose interest in it. And as beginner painters, it's really important to kind of vary up everything that you're doing so that you're not intimidated to try something new. You're just gonna keep doing different things until you're more comfortable with what you're doing. Now this is a really fun piece because the background we're actually going to be doing with our large brush, the number 10 Bright. And we're going to go ahead and put the whole background in and then we're gonna throw the brush away and the rest of it will be done with your fingers. So not only that, but it's quite of a cheap painting because you don't need a whole lot of utensils. Let's run through the colors really quickly. The background will be in a yellow ochre and white background. And then we're going to introduce a little bit of blue with that. And that's how we get that green cast to the base of this painting. And then we'll be using a primary blue. There's different paint companies have different names for it, but it's not a cobalt. It's a little bit brighter than that, but it's in the cobalt family. We'll, we'll need white. We're gonna be using a hooker green, as well as orange, yellow, and a pink, and a dioxazine purple. Now, when you look at this piece, it's primarily what I would call the yellow rose vase, because the yellow is fairly dominant, even though it's not the biggest color in the piece. So let's get started. So I'm going to pick up my number 10 bright, and we're going to use the yellow ochre. Just load your brush. Now before we even get to this point, we really should have decided where our light source is coming from. So again, it's going to come up here from the upper left corner. So that tells us that this part of the background will be dark, and as we graduate across here, we're going to get lighter, because the light will hit here, not here so much. So I'm putting down my darkest element, which is the yellow ochre. And then I'm going to pick up a smidge of white, technical term, smidge, putting that down here. Again, with my hand closest to the back of my brush so that I get this nice arm roll, I'm going to start softly blending with the tip of the brush only, not with the belly of the brush. And see how nice and soft, basically moving what I've just put on there as far as it can go. I really don't want to over blend because I really like the highs and lows. If you would like a full, like one color, then you can go ahead and blend it down here on your, your canvas. But that's not what I'm looking for. So again, I'm working in small areas that I can control. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly, so you have got to stay on top of it. And I'm gonna add more white this time. My ratio of white is getting more as I move across gradually creating a much lighter background. I need more white. We're familiarizing ourselves with our canvas. We're kind of not launching straight in to the details. We're doing the background first. We're setting the scene. I'm gonna pick up a little of that nice blue now too and start introducing that into the lower area. Again, with the yellow ochre, I'm not washing or cleaning my brush off. As you can see, I'm doing that on the canvas. Picking up the white and I'm doing the same blend. So the whole point of being where you're painting is there's so much to creating the piece that you need to be thinking about so that you're there, not trying to get to the end result, not trying to get a finished product, just being here. Because it's going to help you decide the colors and the story you're trying to tell. You know, is this a happy vase of flowers? Is, is it a good thing that you got this vase of flowers? You know, because there are other reasons. <laughs> so you kind of want to stay with where you're at. It's kind of like, you know, be the tree, what that kind of thing, but it's with paint. 
Okay, so now I'm, again, I'm picking up more of the white, more of that background, blending down into this piece because the background is not a severe cut off in this particular painting. It's a real soft blend. So I blend up into the existing background. I'm not too worried about in here because we know there's a big flower arrangement going right there in the middle. Coming down here, continuing with that kind of ochre green color, putting the blues and ochre and whites on. Now, if you're doing this in a warm environment, it's going to dry pretty quickly. As we get closer to winter and rainy season, the humidity is going to create a longer drying time, which you can, of course, use to your advantage. So here we go. Now, this is, as you can see, I'm going a little bit darker right here. It's not my shadow, but I know that my shadow is going to go there. So I'm kind of setting the scene, setting my placement. So now I'm going to put this in my water and I'm going to leave it there. It's really important for your brush that you either clean it right away or put it away in water. Don't leave it out to dry because it will dry and again, you'll only be able to stir paint with it when you're done. Okay, now for the fingers. Okay, so the first thing we really need to think about is our placement. I don't want it to be smack in the middle, so I'm going to offset it just a little slightly to the left. Then the other thing we need to think about is proportion. We want to make the, ar the arrangement has to be in proportion to your vase. One of the more common mistakes that a beginning painter will make is that they will get really tight. And let's look at the painting. It's, it's a kind of a bunch of wild flowers, so it's kind of um, a little bit of chaos. So the fact that some of it goes off and outside the canvas is actually a really good thing because it adds to that lovely free, I just pick these on my walk kind of painting. So I'm getting some white paint on my finger and I'm going to start to just sort of sketch in where I want my vase to be. Now, if you really um, are daunted by this, our trusty white chalk can also do that for you. You can actually go in and draw that in before you pick up your paint and do so. We're not worrying about the top of it because as we know, we're gonna cover that with paint. And this is not my final color either, but I do want to make sure that my proportions are correct. Let me hop around the front here a little bit. I do a lot of painting to the side of paintings and then they all end up lopsided for some reason, who knows. Okay, so I know where my vase is going to be. The next thing I'm gonna do is pick up the hooker green on my finger here. I'm gonna pull some of that burnt sienna in and I'll give it a little bit of a mix. And with this color, I'm going to kind of create the design, even though it's very loose, I still need something to follow of my um, bouquet. So here we go, we're gonna start some of the pieces there. I know I wanna come out this far and I want to maybe have something kind of wander off out there. And now I know kind of where I'm going, I'm actually going to engage a whole lot more paint. And these are dabs, these are short dabs. We're not blending. This is a heavy uh, textural uh, way of painting. So we don't want to create globs of heavy color that we have to try to piece out some light of um, afterwards. So here we go. Now remember when you're looking at um, a floral, the floral itself goes all the way around. So some of this dark green that we're putting in will be eliminated when we put uh, flowers on top, but it'll also give us that background and the greenery that's inside the, um, the floral arrangement anyway. So again, we're there at that floral arrangement and we're seeing all the different things that we need to do. Little tiny dabs here and there, give it that softness of little, uh, we don't have a, this one is certainly not an overthinking um, painting. Little smudges here and there. So again, be here at the painting because one of the main things is things happen up here on the canvas and if you're not paying attention, you might take, take it off or not use it to its best ability. Something might happen that you weren't planning and uh, that often leads to some of the best paintings ever. Okay, 
So we have the design. Is it in proportion to this? Yes. Um, is it not? If it's lopsided, we need to kind of balance it so it doesn't look like the whole thing's going to fall over. But I really like the way that is looking. So now I'm also going to go ahead with that same color, the hooker green with the burnt sienna. Be really careful about how much of the sienna you put in because it will go brown very quickly. And again, just pulling some of that paint down to create the stems. Now, I don't, as you can see, I am not taking my time. I want some of them broken and diffused in here. And none of, they're not straight, they're crisscrossy sideways. Now I'm gonna pick up a little of that yellow ochre on my finger that has the green on it already. And that will give us some relief in there, some lighter colors, so it's not a heavy mass of green. I now want to start putting in some of the background colors. So I'm gonna start with the pink because the yellow is kind of forward. I'm gonna wait for a little bit later on that. When I'm plotting this, even though it's uh, random looking, there is still some design. My eye still has to progress around that painting in a way that isn't, isn't upsetting to the viewer. Mm -hmm. Pink. All right, let's start down here in the left and create some paint flower that Botany has yet to discover. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit more. And we're gonna to continue to move around here, maybe a little, a couple of little buds of that same flower. And maybe we're seeing a little bit behind as well. And then I'm feeling I need to come up here and put in a bit of a bigger one. I don't want a direct line. My eye will find it and it will get stuck there. So if you find yourself lining up your flowers, we need to kind of move them across a little bit there. See, now I've offset it. And I can up here, maybe coming out of there. None of these are final, by the way. We're not finished till we're finished, so we can make these a whole other color if we want to. Creating that. I want to look like I'm filling up the place, but I don't want to look like that's what, what I was trying to do. My colors are blending a bit, so I'm gonna clean my finger off and just go ahead with more of the cleaner pink. And I'm coming down here and skip that because I might put a big yellow one in there. So maybe a little pink to support that. And I like them dropping down here a little bit. So now, when I just look at that with just the pink, that feels balanced to me. You'll have to let me know if it looks like that for you. So now, again, pink is still on my finger. I picked up white, and I want to add a few little highlights while the pink is, is wet, just so that it does a little of its own blending. And just popping it on and pulling it off, it creates this other effect. And this is where you have fun. This is where you try things out. I would caution on overdoing it, though, just, just so you know, because it will blend very quickly. Okay, so now I'm gonna go with my purple. Again, picking up purple, and this time I'm going with two fingers at one time. The second finger I'm also going to add white to, so I've got purple and purple and white. So we're coming in here, and this one, I can kind of blend in rather quickly. Drag them down. I don't want to overdo the purple. I want to keep my ratios from being equal. Purple will be less than pink. Nothing against purple. Kind of like it. That's going to be kind of filled. And I think something up here would look great. This is a great painting to remind you of why you paint. It's to have fun. All right, we have that. So now let's go in and put some orange in. 
Um, these colors are also fairly complementary with the purples and the blues and the oranges and the yellows. So we're working in a complementary uh, pattern um, of color here too. The orange is coming in. Now or this orange is really bright, so it could take over. So let's just make sure we're using it wisely. Now I'm putting it next to the purple so that those colors will work off of each other and create this kind of vibrancy inside the painting. And we're using fairly pure color here, nothing really overmixed. Now these are all the support flowers, and this is an impressionist style, sort of loosely. So um, we're not looking for specific types of flowers, we're alluding. And um, maybe a little bit there. Da, da, da. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to put in those bigger ones. They have more of a shape. They have, they look more of a rose or a peony, that kind of a shape. So again, with my yellow and my orange, I'm going to put some yellow over the top. And I'm going to loosely try to create a shape. We're implying a shape. We're not trying to replicate this particular painting completely. So let's put this one in here in this area. I'm doing one, like a bracket. And then I'm going to go around that bracket. And I'm going to stop there and I'll come back to it. Now my next one, I want to be sure that they're not all the same size and they're not all facing forward. Some of them are going to be off to the side, just like they would in a normal um, a flower arrangement. This one, this area here is begging for a large flower. As you can see, it's still kind of wet. So I'll do the best I can and then I'll let that dry when I move around onto the other parts of my painting. Rather than waiting for paint to dry. Okay, so that tells me I have a nice big flower there. Because at the moment, even though I am putting color in, I'm still designing it as well and seeing what works and what doesn't. So we can't have all the big yellow one, the yellow ones here. We need to pull some over here to the left too. So again, picking up my yellow and cantilever some of them out that side, starting to balance. And instinct is probably your best um, ally here. And remember, if you ask the question in painting, probably the answer will be yes. Do I need this here? Probably you do. Our instincts kick in and if you can just listen to them, they usually don't send you in the wrong direction. All right, so that's where I want my yellows to be. I think I have enough, maybe something off here, just a little, not too strong. And now what I want to do is I want to come back in and define these a bit more, maybe throw in some other, um, like looser areas of that, those colors. So while that's drying, I'm going to head down here to the vase itself. And I'm going to use the white again. I'm going to dry my finger off a little more than that because it's too wet. And I'm going to put that white in again so it's kind of wet. Then I'll pick up a little bit of the blue and I have also included a little bit of that turquoise color just to see. Oh, that's nice. Just a couple of dashes of that in there is nice. But let's go back to our blue. Because if we left the glass just white, it, it's not, even though this is impressionistic, it's, it's still, it would just be this white outline. It's not real to what we're trying to achieve. So now we're going to put a water line in and I'm going to pick up the white. Again, my finger still has the blue on it 
and I'm going to come in and I'm cutting underneath like so. Slight, a slight uh, ellipse here. And then I'm going to pick up a little of that green again, put that on it, and just smear a little bit on top. There we go. See how it creates the top of the waterline? But then the stems have to come back down in. So we'll just do a couple, just really lightly back into the top of that water, cutting through it. And then I'm going to use my finger again and give myself a very small bead of white along the rim of that waterline. Okay, so then I'm going to drag some of that down into the glass to start creating the water behind the glass effect, like so. Maybe a couple of little stems here and there, or not. There we go. So I know that my light source again was here on the left, so I need to put a little bit more light just back here on this side of the vase. So we know which way our light source is, which also tells us in which direction our shadow should be going, which is off here to the right. So I'm going to be using the blue and the purple, which are in the, in, um, the cooler colors in here, and I'm going to put the shadow underneath the vase and send it off through to the right. So let's start with the purple in underneath and then I could actually use my thumb or your finger, whichever you like, to kind of start to move it across. The cool part about this is that it diffuses by the time it gets here just naturally from your finger moving across, which kind of makes it look like the light coming through a glass object anyway. Of course we meant to do that. Okay. And the blue, you can pull some of that in, a little puddle of, of blue here as well. And just lightly pulling it across the purple, it also helps to create that reflective look that kind of helps to include um, with the glass, the feeling of glass here. And then the base of the vase gets a little darker color in it as well. Okay, now I'm just going to come back in with some clean color and I need a lot more white happening up in the flower arrangement itself. So we have where we want the colors to go. I need these to be more prominent and I'm going to do that by putting more of the yellow and white on so that they can pop forward. And then after that, it's just kind of loosely figuring out whether you need more or less of anything on there. If you don't like all the color you have on there, you can put some green back in and cover up some of the flowers. So let's go back to our Diva flower right here. And I'm picking up yellow and I'm picking up white. And again, we know our light source is up here, so it's gonna help a little bit. And I need to fill some of that in with more white. See how lightly I'm touching that? I'm not rubbing and I'm not giving any um, blending. But just by uh, putting some on there, I've created the look of a rose there. I'm gonna go up here. My background colors are not dry yet, so it's good to wait a little longer if you can. There we go. Just a couple of dabs. This one has lost its yellow. Let's put some yellow back in. And then this one needs white, I'm thinking. And we can, of course, overlap. That is, flowers don't just stand out across, away from each other. They overlap each other in a normal situation. 
um, and we need to bring color in down here. So let's pick up a little more of that pink, form down there, and I think some little whites in places here that we didn't get. Filling it in, white's a good color. It's not a clean white. It's got a bit of pink on it because we just used that. But even if uh, it picks up some of the green, that's good. Starting to fill in. Now this I feel is too much of a line. So I'm gonna break that and open that up. Things to watch for, especially in something as random as this, are my flowers, different sizes. We don't have to be painstaking about it, but we just have to make sure that the eye doesn't look at it and go, but they're all the same size. Then we also want to be sure that we're not giving the eye too many lines to follow. This, that's why we kind of plot it and plan it, because if everything is lining up like this, that's all you'll look at. It won't have that feeling of a nice flowy wildflower picking. So I think that is it. So I hope you enjoy playing around with as many of these as you have time for. This is a really great exercise to learn all of the different processes that we're going to learn all throughout all of the paintings that we're doing. Light source, shadow, proportion and design. The more you do, the better you'll get. And the feeling of using your hands to paint is pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed painting with me this week and thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks very much for watching. Now, if you'd like to take a class with me on Zoom, you can sign up on my website through the link in the description below this video. And if you've enjoyed the show, we'd really appreciate any support you can lend us through our Patreon, also in the description below. Because it's through the sponsorship of viewers like you that we can continue to make the show and every little bit helps. So thanks again, and we will see you soon.